Hello guys, King Happy here and welcome to my semi-automatic tree farm tutorial. This one I made on my Let's Play World and on Hermitcraft server. It was a heavy request to do this as a tutorial itself. So it's kind of a layer by layer tutorial today. Not strictly layer by layer but it's near enough. So you plant your trees, they get automatic bone milled and then they get moved to a storage area which you can then take down with your axe afterwards. So this is my Let's Play version. And here's the version on the Hermcraft server. So there's timestamps in the description of different parts of this tutorial. There's also a world download in the description as well for the tutorial world. There's a couple of parts to this. First part is to make the farm itself, then to make the leaf crushers, then to put the actual piston pushers in like these sort of things. And then a the couple of final finishing off things to make it serviceable and easy to use. So hope you enjoyed the tutorial, taking a lot of time to make. So let's get on with it. Okay, this is a layer by layer tutorial. This is an easy way of doing it for this. Now, this is showing you a little grid of where your piece of dirt will be, which you plant your trees on, and in respect to where everything else is on the actual farm. So, below this is a seven wide bit here. We're building inside this area, like so. It's seven wide and also eight long. This is going to encompass all the redstone and everything else underneath the ground. The ground level is three blocks above the actual piece of flooring we've got here and your dirt block is there showing you where you're going to plant it which is along three and along that side as well and up four blocks and then on top of that so let's go on with the first layer okay so we're going to go two blocks away from our corner we put one block there one block there a repeater in here with four ticks and a resin torch on the end we're also going to do a shape like that there and also we're going to put an intertwined bit underneath where you can have your actual piece of dirt we're going to go one before the end of there like that and then we've got this torch here we're going to go around it in a little box just like so next we're going to add another block on top of this with a torch on the side and the same sort of thing again just round it off and then we're going to put our redstone here so there's a comparator here on the minor signal Redstone on the sides. We're also going to do a half a slab up on there. And then on here, we're going to do three bits of redstone. And also, we're going to put a block one above the ground with a redstone torch on the end. And then we're going to put a, another block on the end of this piece of redstone here, like so. And also, another one going here with a final piece of redstone there. Next we add a dispenser on top of this redstone torch here. Then we can put blocks around that again, with the exception of one side which is going to have a hopper going into it. Then we're going to add another block here. We're going to do redstone up here like so. And then a repeater onto here. And then the block we're going to put another block. And on here we can put a repeater and this redstone going into a further block with the redstone torch facing inwards. Next we're going to put a redstone dust there with a block on the corner going up. This will get the trip wire to turn it always on when you're actually using the farm. Next we put a dropper onto the back here which is one block in from the end like so. And put another half slab going into it. Okay, so next we're going to put a dropper facing forwards on top of this hopper. But hop it down as well. Put three blocks being put trip wires on top of. So glass or these or pistons or something. Preferably not pistons for this, put solid blocks on the outsides and then put hoppers facing into that dropper. We're now going to put a piston underneath this piece of dirt facing this way, with a block on the end. We're going to add a piece of redstone on top of there that I missed before in the last layer and then put two blocks along. And we're also going to put a piece of redstone on the end of there and then also another half step going up in the tower with another dropper. Next we add on the actual keep on while using function. So let's put a block on top of there with a trip wire. And then we put some string across. And we're going to do a couple of blocks out to make sure we get away from all of the hoppers. So there's two blocks away, trip wire on. So this will be the on part. You can hear it click now. So it's activated. We'll put a piece of carpet on top of this hopper going there such that when a tree gets pulsed and pushed across, this will pulse and push through a sapling if there is one into your inventory. 
just where you're standing when you're doing it between that carpet and the tripwire just to keep it on next we're going to put some hoppers around this place we're going to do one going up on each part and then from this side we're going to make sure we do one around a corner so like that on there and the same on the other side and then we're going to go back two past the soil so one two you can do this however you want really they're just to catch saplings and apples as the actual leaves get broken like so now we're going to put another dropper facing upwards the final facing upwards dropper with a piece of redstone there and another half slab and on this side we can put two pieces of redstone here and a row of two blocks there and then put a piece of glowstone next to your piece of soil and put two wood blocks either side where you stand, wood logs. Now these ones don't have to be wood logs, but we'll be using wood logs in this farm to make sure the trees can actually still grow and don't see these as a block which is interfering with the growth. So I'm just going to use wood here and I'm going to carry that up as we go around. So that's basically most of the bottom redstone done. All the bit under here is finished. We'll start by going on to doing the actual tree feeder and then we'll do the leaf crusher afterwards and then we'll look at the whole piston pushers outside the farm itself. So finishing off the actual growing the tree part we've got a dropper facing forwards, the last one and Spencer on the end with the last piece of redstone there put a piece of redstone on top of that glowstone there and two more wood logs then we get a redstone torch and we'll just add that onto there this finish of our bud effect when we actually grow a tree. We'll send a signal through and activate the pistons. Now, pistons, we need to activate a wood branch here. Now this, we can make it six high. So one, two, three, four, five, six should be. And we also need a equal height pillar here. Now obviously the hoppers underneath you could do it separate differently, but they feed them underneath those wood logs anyway. So it doesn't really matter too much. Then we put pistons in, so we're going to do two load pistons, which are also six blocks high, so the same height as this. Then we're going to go to the back of this, so we're going to go to a one piece redstone, pause it from there, we we'll go to a redstone repeater, going to the end into a block. We'll then put a half slab on the end of this with a piece of redstone on that. And this repeater is also on two ticks. Next we wire this up with some vertical wiring, so there's half slabs on the bottom of these two blocks. Then we go up a nice little zigzag pattern, finishing up there, just like so. And put redstone on top of all of these half slabs. So the back one's going to power directly, and this one will power this load of logs here, which when these are extended will then power it on the side diagonal. So you can get a lever here and just check that this works. So it goes out and we'll push the tree sideways and then pulls back and stops there. That's where you want it. Now as these are logs and not an actual building block or anything else, when the tree grows it won't see them as anything in the way. So let's dump some bone meal into there and we grab a tree itself, wherever they are these days. They are. We sat on here, make sure we're between the two blocks. Just plant the tree like so and it'll get moved across as it is. So that's the basic part of the actual tree farm done. Next part we need to do is the actual leaf crushers. Okay, time for leaf crusher. Now you need to crush these 20 leaves to have a 100% chance of getting a sapling back per crush because a oak sapling is one in 20 leaf blocks chance. We'll go around from the side, we'll do one piston, one above the bottom of the stickies. So this can be the first level of the leaves. Then gonna put a wood block on the outside. And then we're going to move this around, so we want to have five this side, so one, two, three, four, five, and keep this pattern going, um, like so. We're going to do one piston there, miss one block, so that's where the wood's going to go out. One more piston, a piece of wood, and then a, another load of five pistons like we had on the other side. One, two, three four, five, and then we do another piece of wood just to make this sure that things don't fall out at this point. 
So we're going to move that up by six blocks. So each of these goes up by six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All that ring will go up to that same height in the same pattern. And on the very top, we're going to go one block above the farm itself on the pusher, one block across, and then one block up. This solid block is going to make sure the tree does not turn into a big tree. If that does, it will break the farm. So this made so the tree actually gets stunted growth. And to make sure that's spawn proof if you're not wanting to die from mobs spawning. So bring up the sides and be right back. Like so. Now we're gonna get these pistons to be powered. So I'm gonna do this part of the pistons first and then we'll hook it up to the rest of the actual signal. So we're gonna go from the bottom, we're gonna go here, here, and here. Then we're gonna do a row of redstone on top of this. So when this row gets powered, these pistons will activate and then by bud effect it also power these pistons below it like so so we're going to do that for this side and also the other side exactly the same just reflected and then we get to the ends we're going to do one block down like so and then a half step next to it doesn't need to be half step on this one but it does on the next row so we'll just do another block here and a half step with that going across and this is going to power the pistons in the middle so we just run this across and for instance we'll just power this bit and you'll see the top one has powered them all correctly that's good, that's fine that's what we want and we do the same sort of thing again for this side okay now that that's done for both sides we can deal with each side separately as they're different circuits so this side facing this way we're going to put a full block here we're going to put a half stab here half sub here then we're going to bring that out like so and half sub on the top then we're going to put redstone on top of there as well now we've got half sub underneath this with a repeater going into it just like so with a sticky piston facing upwards and a block on top of that then we go into that block again with just a normal signal and then we go around with half subs and bring it up from that vertical wiring like so. So when this goes, this side also pulses. Okay. Okay, on the other side we're going to do the same bit on the side of this and we'll bring this across with a repeater. And then again another sticky piston facing upwards with a block on top. Now this is where it gets a bit different. We're going to put the slabs all the way across like so. And then we're going to power these pistons in the center. So we actually move this block here into a full block. And then we're going to put half slabs underneath like so. And then we're going to do another row of half slabs here. And another row of half slabs here. Bring this bit up, put half slab in the middle. Such that this can get all the way up. So if you put something here and you turn this on. You see that that block's moved, so these ones are all active. Now this does actually break more leaves than required to get back a oak sapling every single time. So you should get more than one back in general. You might also get more apples as well from the apple trees, so it's probably a good thing to do. So that is basically the whole tree done. So let's just go get a quick demonstration of this, so let's grab another oak sapling. So we're standing on here, it's going, and it does that. You see my ventry, I've now got another oak sapling. That's because this circuit coming around, firing the dispenser inside there, through the hopper, onto your actual inventory. So you can stand here and do that. And up here, we see that there are no leaves on the outside. There's a nice ring around the middle, apart from that bit there. So all these leaves are crushed where they can be, without needing any kind of crazy, slow, laggy, double extending pistons on the outsides. So that's the main tree farm done. It's not particularly pretty, but that's how you basically build it. Now we look at how we can manipulate the wood into a storage area. So a quick lesson on pushers. You can push up to a maximum of 12 blocks, like so, and then no further. So 12 blocks is the maximum you can go in any of these conveyor belts, moving blocks anywhere. There's a whole load of different ways you can do this, different sensors you can use. You can use bud sensors, you can use non-bud sensors. So this one here is going to normal pusher. We push the whole thing 
where there's a signal at the bottom. So for the tree farm, there will always be a log at the bottom of the tree. So this works brilliantly for what we're going to do. So this is quite simple. All it's got is a redstone torch at the bottom, one piece of redstone, and then a repeater. Go into a block, which then goes into half sab at the bottom. It doesn't really matter about the half sab, just a block at the bottom. Piece of redstone on it to activate the bottom piston. And then it goes up on some half sabs. Up it goes, up it goes, up it goes. And that's that. Next, we've got a little bud one here. Now, these bud ones, better for sensors. Now, you can do all sorts of different things for them. There's hundreds of different designs you can make for them. They're relatively easy to do. Um, I've got a couple here, just as normal examples that I've got laying around. There's plenty more examples as well of what you can do with them. But we're going to be using this one as it is sort of the easiest and more, most compact one to use for this. So, we're coming out of the back of the tree farm. Now, you can also join this up to a timer. So where we have here, we have a little sensor. So that sensor will activate the whole thing. You can do that, or you can have a actual timer hooked up to this, so that when these push it through, then you can drag a signal from here, say, and then activate your piston array to then move it somewhere else. So let's set up a little tiny bit here, and I'll be right back. I guess set up a little tiny circuit here. Pull signal off of the side on a two tick repeater. Two ticks are important here for the delay. Sends it through this piston array here and the items get pushed that way. So that means you don't need to worry about the redstone sensor, which is good for what I'll show you in a second. I keep putting these through. I keep pushing them until it can push no more. And then we'll see how we can get around the problem it's going to represent. Please keep pushing this way, keep pushing this way, keep pushing this way. And you think, no, that looks good, but look at this. These can no longer push that wood any further, and you've got wood coming out of here, and that's not very good, is it? So there's a way you can get around that, and because there is no sensor circuit, such as those bits over there, you can actually do something quite easy. We're just going to here and get a furnace, or any block with an invention that can't be moved. We'll get some furnaces here, such that when they get filled up, then this farm will stop working. Stand on that. That will go like that. And not go anywhere. Like so. So this is the longest distance we can push this wood. Like so. If you want to do that. And then you can make a piston array to push that wood somewhere else if you want. Okay, so here's a little shown for just a way of making a maximum size little storage block of wood. We're coming out the side like we had before. Put another furnace onto there. Anything with inventory works as a placeholder just to stop things. They come up there, they come to here. Same thing again, just another timer pulled off of this timer with an extra tick delay on it to make sure the wood has time to move through before the pistons they extend. Otherwise, the pistons extend here as they extend here and the wood gets stuck. So, one more tick there is important for this. Then they go onto a nice big array of pistons with a sensor at the very end. Just a little one to go around and get the stuff up. It's fairly straightforward stuff. So let's keep going into a 12 long by 13 long this way eventually and maximum 6 high. Most of it will be 4 high though because that's most of the tree height. Some of them as you can see are 5 and you will get a few 6s in there as well. So you can keep doing that until it gets stuck and then you can go collect all your wood put a few into here just to show you that moving out it's like so so this has now moved itself away to let more room for more wood to come through and that's basically all the sort of practical stuff for the farm out the way with now a couple of the fancy things kind of make it a little bit easier to use so inside here no get rid of the leaves you might want to put carpet down or something to make it look a bit nicer make sure that all the light levels in the farm are correct so that things don't get spawned and that's about it for that. Next thing is actually get bone meal into the farm itself. So you don't need one there because you get pistons extending there. So next to get bone meal into the farm, these droppers are where your things are going to come from. So your bone meal. From this, we can just put some hoppers on top, and we get some chests as well. So I prefer just to do this. We get two chests coming out. As long as they open, then items go through them. Another chest coming next to it, and you keep going up to give yourself a little bit of buffer room. 
and the front of your farm wherever you want it you can keep going out further if you want you can do whatever you want so somewhere at the front you can have somewhere to put in your bone mill that will go into the bottom and then go through so you do have you want no it's up to you and the next part is to make sure that all of these gaps here probably filled up if you really want them to be so you can just fill them up with whatever you want just to make sure that extra things don't fall out the side so maybe apples saplings don't kind of spill everywhere and do that same sort of thing for every corner of the farm if you want to you know whatever you want to do with that and um, it's up to you it's your own choice how to finish it apart from this block here you can do that on next to it but this block here can't be a full block so you might want to get some kind of staircase or something however you want to match up all the color schemes everything else and you just do something like that just to make sure that you can still open the chest and items will still flow through it so yes that is basically this tutorial done Hope you've enjoyed, hope you learned a bit. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a like. This is an absolute pain to film. Absolute pain. So anyway, thank you for joining me guys. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do. And I'll see you next time, guys.